In this video we're going to talk about the combat side stroke. There's a lot of variables that can go into the combat side stroke and what we're going to talk about today are different body types. If you're tall and slender and you got real long arms, real long legs for paddles, your stroke's going to be different than the guy that is short, stocky, like a power lifter or that type of guy. So we're going to talk about all these different variables. One, first and foremost, when you're going through the water, don't muscle it. Don't sit here and pull, pull as hard as you can, especially on your lower arm. You don't sit here and you pull as hard as you can and pop up out of the water. So when you're pulling, you act like you're grabbing eggs and gently moving them across your body. So as you're doing this stroke, you want to stay as relaxed as you can. A drill I always tell people to do is sit here, move your hand. As, keep relaxed, move your hand. All right, now go as fast as you can. Now, do you have to tense up to do that? 99% of the people say, yes, you do. Now, totally relax your hand. Keep your hand as relaxed as you can. Start your movement again. Now, go as fast as you can. As you can see, you don't have to tighten up your muscles as much because the lower extremity of your hand is staying relaxed. So if you stay relaxed while you're swimming, then you're going to be able to swim a lot faster and have a lot more energy for it. Now, there's two different options of the hand. You can either keep your fingers nice and tight together. I don't mean, you know, forcing them tight, but just, you know, together. Or you keep a little bit of an opening. Now, not full open like this, but just a little bit of an opening here will actually relax your hands and make your pull a little more effective. So when you're grabbing the water, you're going to knife forward. Always, when you're going forward, you're knifing forward, and then you're spooning back. So you're spooning back. So on the lead arm, let's just talk about that once. A lot of people, when they kick out, they'll sit here and they'll pull straight down. Now, a lot of people say, well, that gives you a long paddle. It'll cover more water. Yes, it does. That's maybe a positive thing. You're going to work the shoulders more. The other aspect of that is, as you're pulling down here like this, you're pulling water that's like two and a half feet from your body versus right in tight. So if you pull straight down like this, you're going to use more shoulder. If you bend it to elbow and pull it in right here, you're going to engage a little bit more bicep and save the shoulder. So those are a couple of variables as far as the lead arm. The one thing you don't want to do is, here's your body line. You always want to pull down your body line, right into your body line. You don't want to sit here and pull out to the side. If you pull out to the side, that's going to make you weave through the water, and it's very ineffective. So on your arm pulls, do not pull out to the side. Make sure they're right down in front of you. So here, when I kick out, I'm straight out, I pull down, come back up my body line, pull it in, and then everything's going right out the body line. Now, balance. Act as if you have three lines of balance in your body, okay, three, three artificial lines. You have one that goes through your head, your torso, and your legs. So if your head's out of alignment, your body's going to be out of alignment, and you're going to create drag. Let's say that this is your face, your upper body, and your legs. All right, right here, you have minimal drag through the water. But if you lift your head like this, your body's going to sink, and now you've got drag that's covering this area here. So you're creating a lot more drag. So again, keep your head, keep everything in the line. If you're going to rotate, rotate like as if you got a head brace and your whole body rotates around. Now, keep your head when you're swimming. Always keep your ear, your ear on your shoulder. If your head's up and back like this, your body's going to sink and you're going to create drag. Keep the crown of your head in your water and your ear on your arm. And pick up your chin, look up and pick your chin up to breathe. So instead of breathing like this, rotate up and pick your chin up and that will keep your head down. So that's how you're breathing. Now let's talk real quickly about your breathing. Over breathing. A lot of people end up panting. They'll be going... <sighs> Before you know it, they're fatigued. Gee, wonder why. You're over breathing. Same thing happens if you're running if you're not breathing properly. So you always want to swim to your breathing. And so when you're breathing, you don't have to inhale every stroke. You could inhale every two, three, four strokes. So in other words, you're going... You can do it multiple strokes for every inhalation. You don't have to do one stroke and one inhalation. Now, let's go back to... We've covered balance. We've talked about the breathing. 
talked about staying relaxed. Now, your actual propulsion that you're generating through the water comes from your kick and your upper arm or your first arm pull. In prep and in buds now, they're teaching a stroke that for most people is not very effective. When they teach it, learn it. When it comes to doing a test and getting in the water and having to swim, do what works best for you. So when you're in the water, they're going to tell you to kick, go to your stomach, and flutter, 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 glide as far as you can. That's not a glide. If you're flutter kicking, that's a stroke. So flutter, 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 then you do your arm pull, go to your side, do the other arm pull, and kick and repeat on your stomach. A lot of rotation. You don't want a lot of that rotation. Stay on your side like this. And basically, every time you kick forward and pull, act like you're kicking over a small log. And that will also help you, that porpoising will help you to lead with your head and keep your head down. Now, on the arm pulls, there's a long stroke and there's sculling or a speed stroke and a shorter version that we're going to talk about for the guys that are like short and really stocky. So, on a long stroke, what people do is they go out, pull all the way through, pull all the way through, and then come back out. So it's pull, pull. But now, as you notice, when this top arm is all the way back, it starts up and it lower arm meets and then they kick back out again. That's a long easy glide stroke. The things people goof up on that one is they'll go down here with their upper arm and they'll let it sit here down at the at the uh, hip and then they'll draw this in and now they're trying to glide and take their breath on their shoulder. Big no no. The other variable they do that's wrong, they'll kick, come down again, hold like here, bring it in and then come back up again. Anytime you hold your hands down here that's a danger area, that's a dead zone, you're not using any uh, means of propulsion or recovery during that stroke. So, also, bent arm is more effective than straight arm. Your choice, do it. see which one works best for you. You can vary between the two. You're going straight arm and it's like, man, my shoulder's really starting to get hurt. Okay, now bend at the elbow and bring it in, and that'll relieve the shoulder and put more uh, the uh, stress on the actual bicep. So, on the speed stroke, you would kick out, stand on your side, and if you want, when you kick out, stay on your side, if you need to quarter a little bit to get this hand, upper arm a little further, that's okay. Pull it through, reach, pull through, meet up, kick out. So one, two, kick, two, three, kick, two, three. This is the stroke that a lot of folks do for the combat side stroke. Both hands go up at the same time. Now I'm going to show you a variable. This one here is used for the guys that are really heavy that don't have a lot of glide. Not so much heavy like overweight, but muscular type guys, shorter, stockier. And I'm calling this uh, thrust and reach. Okay. So with this one, the variable is this. When you kick out and you pull, reach. Now when it comes, here's, here's what happens after the first uh, kick. This hand comes back to your chest. And the outer upper hand is going to go on the outside. So from right here, this is your start basically. You're going to thrust and reach. Bring it in. Thrust and reach. One more time. Thrust and reach. So give that a shot. That way your arms are constantly moving. It's like freestyle. You're not going to go like this. Stop, pull, reach, stop, pull, reach, stop, pull. But that's what some of you are doing on the combat side stroke. Okay, you can't be doing that. So you got to keep the movement going the whole time. So try these points of performance. See if they work. Video, itself, video yourself for about a minute or uh, one lap, basically. And then send me the video, and I'll be able to critique it and point things out for you and try to help you out with your stroke. Hopefully this will help. Look forward to talking to you soon.